Well, hi, guys. It's that time. It's our Tuesday testimony. Today, I want to tell you about a healing story that uh, happened in October of last year, 2017. So at the time of this recording, it's been about four months now. Uh, but before I do, let me say a couple of things. First of all, it's good to be home. I've been on the road a lot. And it's also good to be right here live on Facebook with you. Uh, you know, if you're watching my teaching snippets, I've been reposting a teaching on our words that I did back in the early part of 2017. And I, God just was pressing in my heart to repost those and not just for other people, but for myself, because it's always good to remind ourselves how important our words are. You know, in Mark 11, 24, Jesus, it's in red, he said that we will have whatsoever we say. Okay? It's pretty clear. And did you know, uh, for many years, I was a victim of what I allowed other people saying to get in my heart and destroy me, and they didn't mean anything by it, okay, guys? Sometimes people will say stuff and not mean to really hurt you, but you take it into yourself, and it starts destroying you. And look, and, and I was speaking the wrong things over myself, and I had to learn that I am the keeper of my heart. I have to watch over. The Bible tells us that, and of course, I wasn't born again back then. You know, I was an atheist for a long time. Uh, right up until 11 years ago, I was an atheist for almost 23 years. But, uh, but it's true. It doesn't matter if you're a believer or not, okay? Your words will determine your life because my words was badly, in a bad way, determining my life because I didn't understand that. Uh, you know, uh, there's a prayer that David was praying in Psalms 141.3 that says, O oh Lord, set a guard over my mouth and uh, a gate over my lips. And he's just praying that the Lord would be with him to help him know that when he was going in the wrong direction. But Proverbs uh, 4.23 tells us to guard our heart. And that's something we have to start doing. We have to be the ones that guard our heart, okay? Other people can't guard your heart. You have to guard your heart. And the way you do that is you determine what you watch on TV, what you listen to, the people you are friends with, because all of these things get in you and they create who you are. They will create your attitudes and your future because you'll start believing and speaking those things, okay? So anyway, I'm through preaching now, but I did want to say uh, that it's so good to be here with you today to do a live uh Facebook little posting instead of just reposting these teachings. Uh, but I am watching the teachings with you because I need to remind myself of these truths over and over again, just like everybody else. You know, I try really hard not to use the word D-E-A-D. -E I just don't like that word. Like with my phone, when it's running down low on power, I will say I need to plug my phone in because it's almost out of power. I try really hard not to use the D-E-A-D -E word. It's not easy to do when you teach the word and, it, and that word is recorded in that, okay? But anyway, let me just say this also, and then I'm going to tell you about this healing story that, uh, that I have for you. Uh, this is a gift, a t-shirt, a lady I met in Wichita Falls, Texas. She is the owner of a ministry that says, you're enough, uh, and she's telling people not to beat themselves up and let their own self-identity destroy them. She's a Christian, and she wanted to give me this. I was blessed to see her at the coffee shop and uh, spend about three hours with her, actually. So she gave me this T-shirt. So thank you, Dawn, for the T-shirt. Uh, now, let's hop in and talk about this miracle story. Back in October of 2017, four months ago, I was at the John G. Lake JGLM annual conference. Now, I was blessed to be invited to be one of the speakers there. There were several of us, and so many people there recognized me from Facebook, uh, but some people recognized me from me just being on stage uh, speaking. Uh, I was going down the hallway, and there's two ladies, one's in a wheelchair, and the other is standing beside her, you know, they're, and they've got a cell phone laying on the table. And there's a picture of a, uh, a person, and it's got their back, and there's a bad uh, bed sore 
on the person. And as I and I mean, I didn't interrupt them or anything. I was just walking by, and the two of them were uh, talking about praying about it. And the lady in the wheelchair grabs me by the arm and says, "I'm sorry. Will you just please stop?" And you know, I talked to her for a second. And she said, I just wanted to know if you would uh, agree with us and pray with us. This is my sister, and she's bedridden, and she's got this really bad sore. They're having trouble getting well. And I'm like, oh, well, of course I will pray with y'all. And uh, so I did. I just took the lady in the wheelchair by the hand, because it was her sister we were praying for, and I took my hand and I laid it on that cell phone over the picture of the lady with the sore on her back. And I started praying and speaking over it, and I started praying in tongues, by the way. That's, you know, I'm bilingual. I'm Southern uh, English. I sound like Reaper McIntyre. I know that and because I hear it all the time. And then I also, my, I'm bilingual because I have a heavenly language from my father. So I'm praying in my heavenly language that was given to me by my loving father. And when I got through, I looked at the lady in the wheelchair and I said, oh my goodness, I felt that go all the way through my body and my feet were tingling. And she just kind of looked at me and she said, oh, I wish I could feel a tingle in my feet. I haven't felt anything in my legs in so many years. And it just broke my heart. And I said, well, let's just do that. And I, and I said, can I just uh, put my hands on your uh, legs right here? Is that okay? Now, look, I will hold people's hands or put my arm here, my hand on their arms or their forearm. If, I, if it is a man, I'm extremely careful where I touch them, by the way. It's either their arms, hands, or their head. Okay. For men, you need to be careful with how you touch a woman. I never touch a female or a man anywhere without asking them, okay? I always will ask them if I can, like this lady in the wheelchair, when I let go of her hand, I said, what is, is it okay if I put my hands on the top of your legs? And she said, yes. So I laid my hands on her legs and I started praying in tongues over her and commanding her body to line up and start functioning. And when I got through, she just was like big eyed and she said, oh my goodness, I felt the tingle in my feet. I haven't felt the tingle in my feet in so many years, and I feel my feet tingling. Now, the, the wrap-up on this is about 1 a.m. in the morning, I get a text message from a friend of mine. And he doesn't even know that I prayed for this lady, by the way. But they had left this conference that was over maybe at 9.30 or 10. Now, they're at the hotel and they're in a little room worshiping and singing and praising the Lord. It was like a little afterglow service. I had gone home to go to bed because I was tired and sleepy and I just had driven in for 10 hours or so. So uh, I wasn't there, but this woman got up out of her wheelchair and started walking. Isn't that awesome? Now, look, I want to teach you something about this before I let you go, okay? Sometimes... When people feel things, that is just the initial evidence that that seed of healing has been put in them and that it has started working. And we have to encourage them. Now, this is just the start. Start worshiping and saying, thank you for healing me and keep believing that you're continuing toward that complete healing. Uh, you know, I, I tell people this sometimes. Healing is kind of like a Tylenol. You take it, and it starts working immediately, and you start feeling it over a period of time, and, you know, things start getting better and better and better, and then finally it's completely done, and the Tylenol has removed your headache or whatever you were hurting from, okay? And healing is like that. Sometimes you just have a start of it, and they feel it, and it continues to manifest in their body. Uh, and here's a scripture I want to leave you with before I let you go today. And I quote this over myself every day, uh, but this is what happened in this lady, okay? It's Romans 8, 11. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in my mortal body. He quickens and makes well my mortal body. And that's what happens. He's in us, and he starts flowing in us and working in us to renew and make well our mortal body. And that's what happened that day with the lady in the wheelchair. She felt the tingle in her feet, 
and it was continuing to heal her. And that night or the next morning at 1 a.m. while they were at the hotel worshiping, it manifested enough that she knew that she was could she felt enough in her body that she knew she could get up out of that wheelchair and start walking. So anyway, guys, I love you, and I will see you again right here. Bye-bye.